kicked off on his way. David is away doing his day job this week, but thankfully we found a replacement whose own day job leaves him free after lunch. Steve Davis. <laughs> With Steve and Jonathan is Britain's top decathlete and the only sportsman in this country capable of breaking the 9,000 point barrier. That's if you don't count Tony Adams' driving licence. <laughs> it's Dean Macy. With Gary and Rory is an impressionist so dedicated that when he was researching Dwight York, he spent hours triggering the twin airbags on his Mondeo. <laughs> John Colshaw. <laughs> we open matters with Sporting Bluff, Gary, Rory and John. It's the slightly less terrible of the two Neville brothers for you, Gary. Gerard. Clear handball there by Gary Neville. No complaints about that one. It was straight off the volleyball court. Murphy to take it. Oh, it's in! What a costly error it proved to be for Manchester United. So what have you got to tell us about Gary Neville, Steve's team? Gary Neville has been appointed the celebratory face for Manchester's next Olympic bid. Gary Neville has been appointed ambassador for tourism in Malta. Gary Neville has been appointed a Eurovision judge. <laughs> you do, do you do Manchester United players? You do Beckham, don't you? Yeah, it's quite easy to do David Beckham. You just sort of like, you know, keep your head still and like raise <laughs> one eyebrow and like sound like Dick Henry. Oh, Dad, I got you wrong again. <laughs> and he has modelled his new um, haircut on an idea he got watching his wife get out of the bath, hasn't he? <laughs> I'm storing that one up for later use, if you don't mind. What sort of event would you have in Manchester Olympics, then? Chassis burning. What else? I was dead happy to get the gold medal for being top and sorted. <laughs> you can imagine some of the news headlines if, um, you know, the Olympics ever does come to Manchester. I'm Michael Burke. The entire Brazilian volleyball ladies team have tested positive for Dwight York. <laughs> I think you should pump for one, Gary. Mm -hmm. Eurovision. Eurovision. You think that Jonathan was telling the truth? Let's yes. see if you're right. No. Steve, in fact, is completely accurate for once. Gary Neville has bizarrely... <laughs> Gary Neville has bizarrely been named as honorary ambassador for the Maltese Tourist Authority. The only person who didn't think this weird was Neville himself. I know of no other place in the world where football fans love Manchester United so much. Certainly not Manchester, anyway. <laughs> Gary Neville was partly responsible for organising the wedding of David and Victoria Beckham. Everything was going fine until the last minute, when his brother Phil clumsily brought down the bride just inside the nave. <laughs> Steve Donathan and Dean, your question is about Premiership New Boys Fulham. Here they are, demolishing Crystal Palace on their way to winning Division 1. But according to their captain, Andy Melville, there's a very special reason they were promoted. Gary's team. The secret of Fulham's success is singing country and western songs before each match. The secret of Fulham's success is that they have harnessed the power of the pyramids. The secret of Fulham's success is a glass of red wine before every game. Before we start, isn't it nice, ladies and gentlemen, to have Steve Davis back on the show? Isn't it lovely? No. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Always lovely. We've got Steve, one of the finest snooker players the country's ever produced. Steve, have you still got your first ever cue, may I ask you? Yes, I have. And we've got Dean, one of the finest decathletes. Have you still got your first de decatheter? <laughs> <laughs> Whereabouts are you from, Steve? I I'm from, well, well, originally I was from, I I'm moved, but I I'm now in the sort of Romford area. <laughs> well, not really. It's 
was class. No, really. originally I was in hospital, but then we moved. <laughs> and then, well, I was in the bedroom for a bit, and then we moved again to the living room. Dean, whereabouts are you from? I'm from Canvey. Canvey. Cream of Essex. Canvey Island. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm not, he's, that's not the heart of Essex, actually. It's where Canvey I'm Island is. Romford's where it's all at. <laughs> OK, so uh, let's have a look at the questions. <laughs> was that... Michael Jackson there at Fulham? It was, actually, yes. He, he went as a guest of Mohammed Al-Fayed. Is that him and his away skin? <laughs> <laughs> Monfold, you see? Yeah. I was originally from Plumstead. Yeah, oh, I, no! Uh, <laughs> I used to be called the Plumstead Potter. <laughs> you know what, if I were you, I'd keep that quiet. <laughs> Are they called the cottagers? Yeah. And is that not a gay pursuit of some we now? Mm. Cottaging. You're mm. familiar with... Are you familiar with cottaging? Not on my own. <laughs> no. <laughs> Don't look at me. I'm saying the Plumstead, the Plumstead potter has never gone cottaging. <laughs> Every now and then you'll read someone gets called cottaging, aren't they? Yeah. OK. And they go to a men's convenience, and they will go into the small cubicle, and there is what, there's sometimes, often, they, I don't know, a gay handyman's been out and about with his Dremel or something, and they've carved a small hole. <laughs> which I believe is called the glory hole. <laughs> is it like now, when I was a kid, the first time I saw it, I didn't know what it was. I was peeping through the answer. I almost lost, I almost lost the sight in that eye. <laughs> My it, iris is still a bit wobbly. <laughs> is it flush? It's... <laughs> is it flush? I did pop myself through once, just for a lark. There was no one there. I couldn't get back out. That's how tight it was. I had to wait for a friendly fireman to come down, who coincidentally was with a Red Indian and a New York cop. <laughs> Escape. That's what I think. Mohammed fired. G Egyptian? Yeah, he's Egyptian. Egyptian. Oh, that's, they could be the pyramid power. A lot of good there. snooker players, actually, in Egypt. Are they really? Yeah, and a lot of the hieroglyphics. You can see, you can see the way they actually... <laughs> <laughs> in a pyramid, if you put a razor blade in a pyramid, apparently it stays sharp forever. Well, because you wouldn't use it. <laughs> So we go with pyramid power, Captain. OK, pyramid so power. you think that Gary was telling the truth. Let's see. No, of course not. I said country and western. <laughs> well done. You've just not won 64,000. <laughs> <laughs> so John was the man in the know. Kitman Alan Bevan played a CD by country and western singer Brad Paisley before the first game of the season. And because the team won, the music was given the credit and was played before every match thereafter. Fired has funded the purchase of expensive players with the profits from Harrods. Three million pound Lee Clark, for example, was bought with the proceeds from two pan scourers and an apple ties. <laughs> and at the end of all that, Steve's team have no points and Gary's team have no points. It's our injury board now. Each team must choose a number between 1 and 12 to reveal a sports person and something that wounded them. We want to know the story behind the injury. Gary's team? Number 10. <laughs> number 10. Let's have a look. Ah, it's our very own Dean Macy and Phoenix the Carp, gambling around after being saved from slaughter in a cheap election stunt by Tony Blair. <laughs> we want to know why foot and mouth disease caused Dean here to consult the doctors. Gary's team. Did he have a calf injury? Oh. <laughs> no, getting injured by a cow, it can happen, you know, it can happen. It happened to me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's very, you know, no, Nicholas, you know, it's very serious, old bean. You know, I, I got injured by a cow, you know. I was taking the head off, yeah. <laughs> and I dropped it on my foot, you know, and it was very, very bad, very serious, you know. Not very nice at all, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Is it something to do with, um, did he have to train on roads because he couldn't train on country paths because they're all closed? Is the correct answer! <laughs> yep, well done. Dean normally trains by running in the fields near his Essex home, but these all became closed off during the foot and mouth crisis. And when he started training on tarmac roads instead, he ended up with shin splits. Shin splits. <laughs> <laughs> and when he started training on tarmac I think roads, you'll get it right I knew you'd do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's going to do it by drinking a bottle of water now. <laughs> Don't you dare. <laughs> Swallow. You've heard it before. <laughs> Swallow. 
swallow. That's how he got match of the day. <laughs> And when he started training on tarmac roads instead, he ended up... Oh. <laughs> I tell you, it's going to end in tears. ...with shin splints. <laughs> Being a decathlete, Dean here has to be proficient in no fewer than ten different sports, as opposed to, say, Steve, who's not very good at one sport. <laughs> Steve Steen, pick a number, please. I'll have two. Number two, go good on then. Man. OK. That's snooker player Mark Williams and a pig. So how did a pig bring last year's snooker world champion to grief, Steve's team? Isn't it? Last week we had on the show, we had uh, pig calling. We, did we just had a question calling. about a calf. Why? So many animal questions. Am I right in thinking that maybe the BBC are running out of sport and they're trying to wed this show with Wolf's Animal Hospital? Mm. <laughs> Which would make sense. You'd imagine old Wolf out there. I'm going to do the impersonation there, John. Look and learn. Okay. Hello! <laughs> Tuned in. Wolf Harris isn't even here. <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. Can you see what it is yet? Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> Do another impression, Jonathan. Go on. All right, Gabriel. Oh. <laughs> is it the right eye? Can I ask you, uh, Dean, while we got you here, I know it's quite a sensitive subject, but you know, um, in your line of work, I know there's an awful lot of talk about drugs and drug testing. Uh -huh. This drug that we always read about, that, uh, that athletics uh, is involved with, this nandrolene, is that the same stuff that you use on your windows? <laughs> <laughs> You've got to be crazy to use that. <laughs> it smears and everything. Yeah, but your eyes are as clear as bell in the morning, aren't they? <laughs> you know, um, are you ever worried about injuries in snooker? I'll tell you what you should worry about, Steve. Deep vein thrombosis. <laughs> you should worry about that. You mate. should get up. You're sat there out. for long periods of time. <laughs> you know what I mean? So the only thing I can think of yeah. is um, this is I, the only thing. This is the only <laughs> thing. Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm supposed to know the answer, on it, and I don't know the answer. You don't know the answer. No, I don't know the answer. Um, he, he had food poisoning down in, in Brighton, I think. Um, mm. But I remember it being mussels. But I mean, could it have been? Food poisoning. I'd no, that's not right. Okay. <laughs> Any ideas over here? Do you think Bobby Robson would know? Well, I mean, you know, it's, um, it's a very, you know, very talented pig, but. Um, <laughs> Gary, you did Bobby Robson, didn't you? Sir? I do. Can't do it. You know, you know. <laughs> that also works as his Godfather impression. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so neither team have got it right. Mark Williams was, as you do, feeding a pig's ear to his pet Rottweiler when it decided to eat his hand instead. <laughs> absolutely true. The bite meant that Williams couldn't hold his cue properly, and in his match against Steve Davis, he experienced a humiliating 13-2 victory. <laughs> I remember now. <laughs> Williams actually did name his Rottweiler Tyson, which explains why he was feeding it raw ears. <laughs> in winning last year's World Championships, Mark Williams managed four centuries in five frames. That's as opposed to Steve here, who's managed five frames in four centuries. <laughs> and so, at the end of that round, Steve has no points and Gary has three. It's excuses time now. Gary's team, it's British boxing's best, in fact, only hope for you, Audley Harrison. Here he is making short work of his first pro fight against Michael Middleton. Oh, he's got him with the ribs and he's got him with the left. Middleton's in all sorts of trouble. It's all over in the first. OK, our question is this. Minutes before Audley's debut, why were there three boxers with gloves on ready to fight? Gary's team. Three boxes. Three boxes. Mm. Were they forming an orderly queue? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh baby, oh baby, I'm prince, but I'm gonna be king. And oh baby, I could have beaten Audley's opponent. I'm telling you. Is that Gary? That was Gary. <laughs> <laughs> well, was you're sitting in the very seat that Chris Eubanks sat in a few weeks ago. No, you know? no, no, please, no. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. One, one cannot engage with you. No more, you bank. No, please, please no. <laughs> because, you know, listen, one, one is just a man. <laughs> you know, pl please, well, one is, should not be 
expected to be subjected to all of this um, negativity-ness. <laughs> No, I think Middleton wasn't going to come out of fight because of the money thing with the television and in the end they had standby boxes. Absolutely correct. For three points, yes, well done. <laughs> right up until the last moment, two other boxers were ready to replace Middleton until a row about money was finally resolved. Harrison's management had forgotten to cross out a clause in Middleton's contract, which granted him 20% of the TV money. And Middleton, who was supposed to be paid three and a half grand, ended up taking home ten times that for 165 seconds' work. It wasn't the only mistake in Middleton's contract. There was another error where it described him as a boxer. <laughs> Audley studied at Brunel University, where he wrote a 15,000-word dissertation on the social perspective of boxing. His main thesis was that if you don't give me an A, I'll beat the shit out of you. <laughs> so John, what do you think of Nick as a, as a presenter? Hello, I'm Nick Hancock. Every joke told the same way. Start on a high inflection, pause, and then go down to deliver the punchline. <laughs> Now, Steve, you're not the only former world snooker champion. Now, Steve, you're not the only former world snooker champion who spends most of his matches these days sitting down trying to look involved. Here's Stephen Hendry losing to Paul Hunter in this year's B and H Masters. Where's the cue ball going? Paul. Paul Hunter four. After that defeat, Stephen Hendry's coach finally realised the reason why he is playing so poorly. But what is it, Steve's team? Do you watch snooker, Dean? Ever? Yeah, when I feel like it. Yeah, after being the mood. And what sort of mood is that? Like comatose? <laughs> <laughs> it's not as big as it was, is it? It's not as big snooker as it was. Uh, well, I don't know. It's, it's fairly big, but um, no, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> what I like about Steve, you always get a pippy comeback. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you're spending too much time on the. Uh, on the yellows rather than the uh, important black. Mm hmm <laughs> <laughs> Is it because... Yeah. His coach mm -hmm. thinks he's got a crappy cue. It's a correct answer for oh. three points. The reason, according to coach Frank Callan, is that Henry is still using a child snooker cue. He said Stephen's playing with the worst cue in the game. He got it when he was 12. Bizarrely, a few years back, Stephen Hendry's cue was actually kidnapped and then returned equally mysteriously. Police took the whole thing seriously as they thought it might be a dry run for kidnapping Posh Spice. <laughs> and at the end of that round, Steve's team have three points and Gary's team have six. <laughs> our regulars of their right to sight as we play field of sportsmen steve and jonathan first this week go on steve like you remember the rules don't you don't forget to take your blindfold with you steve oh this is a new experience yes standing up and walking to the middle <laughs> <laughs> okay and can we have our first mystery guest please Okay. <laughs> you can begin your grappling now. That's you. Oh, blimey, you've got sweaty palms. What are you doing? <laughs> Hold on, it's a leg. What, down here? Uh, oh, Blimey. I heard a lady's whispery laugh. That's familiar to me. Yeah. It's not to you, Steve. <laughs> you've got a leg as well. I've got Shall a leg. Shall we make a wish? <laughs> oh, it is. She's got a friend. Yeah, I found it's another lady. Well. Come on, we're quids in here, one each. Well, I'm not What's this? I've a field down there. It's a big. <laughs> Is it a Q-tip? Have they come to do Gary's ears again? <laughs> Is <it> Christmas. <laughs> I remember this. You know, I tell you. What. <laughs> I'm a. I'm a school. This, this is a. This is a. This is a. Yes. Are yes. you, uh, you a cancerian? 
No, we get on very well together, you know. <laughs> I tell you what, I could ruin you for normal men. I'm <laughs> This harassment, I do apologise. So what you got? You've got another lady over there as well. There's three of them. Yes, there's three girls. Get one. That's a fella, this one. Is it? I think so. Hey, what's that? What's that? Oh, I thought that was his popping out there. I thought the old rat lost magic had done it again. He knows no gender boundaries. It's the World Twirly Championship. Yeah, the UK button yeah, twirling yeah, team, I'll give you that. <laughs> OK, well done. Gary and Rory, if you could take your places, please. I enjoyed that. I didn't. That's like a big night out for me. <laughs> I had the geezer. Not for the first time. <laughs> right, buzz on. And can we have our second mystery guest, please? <laughs> OK. Oh, this is easy. <laughs> And your time starts now. Oh, oh. hang on. Oh, he's out. Oh. oh. What have you got there? Oh. <laughs> it's a step. Do we go up the steps? Oh, my God. Yeah, go up this? the steps. Oh, something hard. <laughs> Gary! Oh. Oh. <laughs> I think... We've, cli right. we've climbed under the stupid. Oh! <laughs> oh! Is it free willy? <laughs> you far off. You get Jonathan excited. <laughs> There's somebody underwater. It's <laughs> <laughs> the name of the event. How long has he been down there? He's going to be popular with the ladies, this bloke, isn't he? <laughs> So at the end of that round, Steve's team have six points and Gary's team have six points. <laughs> we end the show as usual with the name game. The leaders goes first, which is neither team, so alphabetically it's going to be Gary's team. Pass those on to Rory, please. As many names as you can get in 90 seconds, <laughs> starting now. Uh, Fulham owner. Um, hasn't got a British well, passport. Oh, very yeah. good indeed. Um, Phil and Gary's dad has the same name as he has surname. Neville. 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 Yeah, yeah. Neville. Any of those will do, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll do an impression of this one for you. Hey, tell you what, Gary. OK, Des there. That's very good. You <laughs> see, that wasn't bad. Line he straight away. <laughs> He's on big break and his surname is a star sign. John, John Burgo. Very good. What are you doing? Steve Davis would probably play the black, something like this. We're running out of time. Oh, yeah, we are. <laughs> his first name is, an, is a posh word for biting, uh, as in biting satire or sarcasm. <laughs> In the Latin, mordere, to bite. Mordant. Morder, very good. Oh. And the second name is, he's good, eh? <laughs> Gary's been dumbed up for this show. <laughs> uh, second uh, is Barbie is one. It's a toy dog. 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 Very good indeed. Uh, this is a, a Japanese midfielder, I think, is coming to Arsenal. I hope he's coming Makata. to Arsenal. Yeah, first, first name? Hide Toshi. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Mm. Now, what do you do with your car, Gary? Clean it. Yeah. <laughs> Before you, clean it, before you clean it, you have to make it stationary, don't you? Park it. OK. Um, second name is, you know, he used to play piano for Squeeze. He has late night, late night with... Um, Jules Holland. Yeah, with that Holland. Jules Holland. Jules. Yeah, very good. <laughs> and the last one, Jules at ten. Bong. Oh! Trevor oh, McDonald. Yeah. Bong. Yeah. You need seven to win. I'll say something to Jonathan. Thank you, Dean. Yeah. Time starts now. OK. Uh, his dad was Neville Neville. His brother was Phil. His name is... Gary, then. That's right. OK. This bloke, he's a snooker player. He, uh, he could advertise by Actol or one of those products. Uh, he's Stephen Hendry. OK, there you go. <laughs> All right. Now, this bloke, first name is... Uh, it's like a newspaper, the something star. Second oh, yeah. name is like a directory. Thompson. There you go. Thompson. Thank you. Oh, cool. Um, 
first one is, uh, if, a second name is if you're in Italy and you want to buy something cold to keep your milk in, you say, I want a... Fridge. Gio. And the uh, first name... <laughs> it's similar to the name of that bloke in Pop Stars who did, Hit me, baby, one more. Darius. Time. But if it's an Italian word and anyone would know, it would be... Darius. Darius. That's well, well done. Um, <laughs> if you're in Italy, this is what you would be called in the olden days. You would be a... This is the, the something Stadium. empire. The oh. something empire. It was the empire. <laughs> What city are they from? From Italy, from the Rome, Rome, Rome. Yeah, there you go, all right. And the second name, it's a weird spelling, but it's like, another song. Bye bye, Miss American Pie. Drove my Chevy. Chevrolet to the... That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, the second what? name here is, until you get to know him, this is what people think of Rory. <laughs> so nothing could be further from the truth, because he's a good bloke. All right, the first name is, often, <laughs> if someone's very pretty, they think they're stupid. I'm always being accused of this. But it's a, like, if you're a woman with long blonde hair, they think you're a bit of a... Tart. Bimbo. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's speech of that thing, boy. That's, that's it's all over, isn't it? <laughs> no, a bimbo, OK. And the second name, first part of it is, if you put on a lot of weight, you are very... Fat. And uh, the end bit is, it's a... Uh, <laughs> Um, if you ca can't, can't, then you can. You can, and the middle bit is out. Okay, now this last bit. All right, if, remember, remember there was Pinky and someone. Perky. Perky. Right, and if it was Inky and... Perky. That's right. <laughs> no. Well done, he, he came in with no. He came in with no. He was just in there with no. Quite honestly, the name game is such a farce, there's a lot of cheating going on there. It's only 12 all, and I think that's probably about fair. There was a bit of... A bit of shenanigans on both sides. So, it's tie-break time. And I think, as a, as a special tribute to our diver there, we should have, how long can Jonathan and Rory hold their breath underwater? <laughs> Ready? Well, now. Steady. Go! Go! <laughs> something to anybody at home, especially youngsters watching, it's not a good idea to put someone's face in a bowl of water <laughs> unless it's Jonathan Ross. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but the winner this week is Rory's team, I think we should say. We're all off to give the whole of Battersea Dogs Home a slap-up feed using one of Gary's ears. <laughs> My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now.